Hello there everybody, Peter of England here bringing you a short video entitled Constitutional Considerations. Now, there is much talk uh, in the media about these problems that we're having with this, uh, this uh, ongoing charade concerning the leaving uh, the, of England leaving or the United Kingdom leaving uh, the European Union, which is commonly referred to as Brexit. Uh, these two points that uh, I'm going to try and address now have not been addressed as far as I understand by the media, uh, but they refer or revolve or orbit around two major constitutional considerations. The first consideration is the fact that for many people they are unaware that uh, England and the United Kingdom is predominantly a Protestant um, country. So the, the official state religion for the United Kingdom is that of Protestantism. Um, on the converse, in Europe, it is Catholicism. So if we look at Italy, uh, Catholic, France, predominantly Catholic, so is Germany, so is Spain and Portugal, Belgium, the Netherlands, Ireland, of course, couldn't be more so. Um, we see Poland. We see uh, Slovenia. The one exception of this is probably Greece, with a population of Catholics of probably not not even four percent. But they are um, they come under the the uh, auspices of the Greek Greek Orthodox Church, which uh, is is a, is another is another story in and of itself. So the point I'm trying to make here is that uh, for all those who have voted for us to initially. Uh, um, leave the European Union in the June referendum in 2016, uh, a very, very good good result, i.e. we are taking a, a country which is, has a, a, a religious and set of cultural beliefs quite diverse and quite separate from those of these other predominant countries. And please re refer to the fact that the saxe coburg gotha House of Windsor um, this is the crowd there in the royal palaces of the United Kingdom, uh, the Mountbatten Windsors. Um, they're from a German line of um, control, uh, controlling manipulators, and they are part of what's called the Holy Roman Empire. And the Holy Roman Empire stretches back to uh, Constantine. Uh, it, it stretches right the way back to uh, ancient ancient Rome and so the inheritors of these uh, of these models are the 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 royal family who were predominantly Catholic but have now changed as a convenience uh, into pretending that they are uh, allied with a, a, a Protestant cause so uh, this is uh, not so uh, ridiculous as maybe some people might think because look at the people who embraced um, Catholicism uh, after a period of time. Princess Diana converted to Catholicism. Tony Blair, when he left office, suddenly decided he wanted to be Catholic. Um, so what's really going on in the background? Do these people have to renounce their Catholicism in order to maintain a position of prime minister? I know there are acts of, uh, of parliament now which uh, are uh, supposedly there to ensure that there is a, an equipartition of, of uh, an ability to be represented and to, to uh, rule politically, but um, that's one of the things that uh, possibly needs addressing. The constitutional argument of why a Protestant organisation or country has been held hostage in this European uh, maelstrom. Uh, the other point uh, which I'd like to address very, very uh, sincerely to any of those people who voted or wanted to remain or are still under the belief that we should remain in the European Union, please um, address the fact of something called common law. Uh, approximately one third or slightly over of all judicial systems on the planet have a system of what's called common law. Um, common law is a basic set of rules and if you're not quite sure the difference between common law or civil type of law or Napoleonic law, then please just go and look that up. But what's most important is the fact that the countries, the predominantly le uh, predominant legal system is a civil code or codex in Europe. And for example, in, in France, it's under a Napoleonic code. Uh, in Spain and Portugal and in Germany and Austria and in Switzerland, there is no common law. 
Uh, and what that means is, in effect, they are under a type of Napoleonic code law, uh, where there is no trial by jury. Uh, the best you get, for, for example, in Germany for sentences uh, or uh, supposed crimes that could carry a sentence of anything up to two years, then you get tried by one magistrate or judge. For anything over that, then you're possibly tried by two or three judges. And for serious crimes against the state, that could be uh, three judges and maybe two lay personnel. But the bottom line is, ask yourself this. For the people in the United Kingdom, if we stay within the European Union, it will be for certain that our judicial system will be paired and pulled back bit by bit until we are fully under the jackboot of this European judicial system, which is based on a series of uh, juiced in individuals, predominantly uh, aligned with Masonic orders, who are told how to rule in any particular case. So you don't have the luxury of standing or sitting or being tried before a jury of your peers, a trial by jury, whereby the, ju the jury with a good smack of common sense and a, a minimal understanding of, of the law can ensure that justice is done no matter how abhorrent or how rogue a particular state uh, would become in enforcing criminal procedures onto otherwise normalised daily activities. So this is something that you've got to bear in mind. And also, I would also address anyone who's interested in constitutional matters there. Please don't forget that a jury is empowered under the basic tenet of common law to try and judge not only the facts, but also the law. The judge is nothing more than a convener. So what I would be advocating out there, all, uh, all juries that are impaneled, if you want to change the way that the system works, if you want to change it for the better and the good, simply go rogue. And if you actually think that the individual sitting in front of you uh, deserves to be set free or found not guilty, then it does not matter how the evidence stacks up against that individual. You can sit there, you can return a verdict of not guilty, even if, as they say, a blind man on a galloping horse might have seen otherwise. So, very important point. If you stay in Europe or we remain in Europe, there is a very, very good chance that our justice system will be compromised and it will become uh, very, very similar to the, the, the kangaroo courts that operate in Switzerland and Austria, in Germany and in France. I tell you, you don't have a hope. And what, it, uh, what they will also throw at you is if you refuse to, to turn up for any particular proceeding, they will come with SWAT teams as they do in Germany and Austria and arrest you and kick your door down. You can be jailed in Germany for debt. And what they will dress that up is uh, if, you, if you refuse to come and give a totally explicit uh, set of details about your, your financial uh, situation to the, the uh, it's almost like an insolvent practitioner, then what they say is that you are refusing the authority of the state and they will imprison you under that charge. So uh, for all those who are remaining, you need to remain because there are things out there that you're not fully informed about. And what I would be doing is now just hoping and praying that even if there was a second referendum, you would be hitting that button as hard as you possibly could to say, I changed my mind. We've got to get out. And out means out. And let's do that. So thank you for listening. Peter of England signing off on this video. Don't forget to press the buttons, subscribe and like. And also please circulate. Thank you.